Howdy, I'm Julia Rose. Oh, pfft, haven't you heard? Delightful made an invitation to her subscribers to make a tropical-themed doll for a video of hers. My idea? Sally, who sells seashells by the seashore. This was a huge step out of my comfort zone. I've never made a doll before, so Delightful, if you're watching this, thanks for pushing me out there. Our journey starts off with the windshield wiper on my car falling off, and then we went to Michael's and I got the teeniest brush I could find. Uh, and uh, then I got some fabric, and then I got distracted. Here I am, sitting on my patio, hey, writing out chords that don't remember how to play. Living out memories over again. Maybe I, maybe I. And I found myself a Sally. Um, I got this for my kid in my 4-H club because I went to like three thrift stores and I did not find a doll I could use. Uh, it worked out in the end though. Time to snip off that rubber band and start on the hair. Like most used dolls, Sally's hair has become greasy over time because the glue from her head has, you know, bled out into her hair. Um, I washed her hair first and then I uh, brushed it. Next, I got baby powder. Uh, baby powder, I read somewhere, can be used to nullify the glue in doll hair. So you can see here that I'm taking a section of hair, brushing from the top down to the bottom of the section, and then uh, pouring powder on it, and then brushing it again. I'm a jack of all trades, I and they so spades, I'm, I'm coming out where you can see me, I'm making my mark on now her hair is much softer and almost glue free. Uh, I washed it with shampoo and conditioner after this and then I brushed it out and then let it dry. Now it's time to steal her eyes. Or <laughs> use acetone to wipe them off. Uh, yeah, this part was an experience because the paint dried before all of it wiped off and I was like, oh no, but I just had to put more acetone on it, so yeah. Also, she had nail polish, which is why I'm showing her feet. Alrighty, so I gave her three coats of Duraclear matte varnish on her face and the other parts of her body that I wanted to blush and freckle. Also, yes, I know my palette looks ridiculous. It's less wasteful, okay? I don't need to throw it out. I've come to speak to you again. Next, I blush your cheeks using a cotton swab. Later, I found out that it's actually better to use a brush for this. I also did this to um, other parts of her body that would naturally be redder. It's Tenfully, blissfully, dotting watercolor freckles onto this doll's face, somehow without realizing that when I go over it with Duraclear matte varnish, which is a liquid, it will wipe away the watercolor. Um, I had to go over it with acrylic to add the freckles, but it's not a big deal, it was fine. Realizing that my plan would not work, I decided to use the watercolor pencils as a sketch that I could wipe off after the paint was dry. Alright, it's paint time! Um, first I did the lips, which I made way too dark brown, but I fixed those later. Um, and then I did the eyeliner, or her eyelashes I guess. Um, and then I did the whites, and then I did the pupil slash uh, iris, but mostly iris because I don't actually draw the pupil. Oh, also I did her eyebrows. They turned out really symmetrical, great, but it also looks like she's kind of bored. Like, bored out of her gourd when she should be happy and carefree, selling her seashells with ease. Well, now I'm making another tongue twister. By the way, Sally is supposed to be Polynesian. Um, I tried to make her look Polynesian, but 
I, I don't think I got the eyes right. Painting on dolls is hard, okay? Mother of pearl, mother of pearl, mother of pearl. It's flower crown time. So I make a circlet of garden wire or whatever that stuff is called and um, I don't know if you can see but I'm bending the end into like a little circle so I can slip the other side of the wire through so I can adjust the crown later. I'm really bad at explaining things. Next I'm gonna make things shiny by adding some bronze paint that I actually got for D&D &D to paint this little dragonborn figurine. Look at her go! Time for that bronze goodness. Um, <laughs> okay, don't worry, her eyes do not actually look like this. I go over the uh, eyelashes again and make them look less horrible. Uh, you can also see her goth face in which I made her lips way too dark before I fixed them. She looks kind of rad, but not the vibe I'm going for. Then I forgot where I put my uh, beach decoration stuff, and for some reason I put them in this teapot. And you can watch me drop them as soon as I find them. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, moving on. Forget about this. I took two little pearls and I glued them to her ears. Originally, I was going to try to do some sort of wire thing to stick them in, but the glue wasn't strong enough and I was afraid the wire would get stuck in her head. Now I'm painting over her features with the matte varnish. Except for her eyes and lips, which I want to be shiny. Now I'm putting Mod Podge over her eyes and lips in an effort to make them look less clumpy. Clay time! Uh, I'm making leaves, flowers, and sea grapes. Uh, sea grapes are these like trees that grow here in Florida. They look really cool, so I thought I'd include them. Um, I'm using my Dragonborn figurine as a tool for some reason. Just ignore that. This is where Lady Luck fails me. I tried really hard to make her some nice clothes, but um, I didn't have any factory clothes to go by. I didn't have any patterns, so I tried making my own out of tissue paper. That did not work, so I uh, moved on to tinfoil, and this was starting to go pretty good. Uh, I got marker on the doll, however, while I was sketching out the patterns. What was I to do? Um, I tried to wash it off with soap and water. That did not work. Uh, then I tried to use acetone. Turns out this doll is not made out of skin-colored plastic. Instead, made out of plastic that was painted to look like skin. So now she has these streaks all over her body. They're really faint, but I can see them. Um, they tied her backstory, though. She was attacked by a shark as a child because I say so. So I decided to make her a dress instead because that's really simple. Um, I'm actually glad I decided to do this because it looks way more like something you'd actually wear to the beach than what I had planned originally. I made a drawstring at the top so that it would stay in place on her body. flipped it inside out and sewed up the seams. While sewing, I avoided a part of the seam and sewed the sides instead to create a hole underneath where the drawstring comes out. Um, remember that twine I got? Turns out it's not actually twine. It's a uh, it's a uh, like a a bunch of twine stuck together. So I made it into a belt instead of making it into like I don't know what I was planning to do with it. Make a net, I don't know. In order to make the belt detachable, I had to sew on some buttons. You know, like the kind they have on jeans, only plastic and a lot smaller. I tried to hot glue them on first, but that definitely wasn't strong enough, so I had to sew them on using the wrong color. Maybe you should just calm down. I have a small vial that I filled with teeny tiny shells that I've collected from the beach. Then I used pliers to bend the metal that was coming out of the cork in the vial to clip it onto the belt. And we're back to clay. Uh, I made plumerias and sea grapes and more of the stuff that I made talked about making earlier. Yeah. Suddenly, it's the next day and I'm painting my clay. 
I made one bird of paradise flower, but I ended up scrapping that because it kept falling apart. Too spidery and delicate. The entire time I was painting these sea grapes, my camera was set to slow motion. I'm a genius, so that's why this is so normal, because when I set it back, I couldn't speed it up again. Yeah, sorry about that. In order to make the stamen of the hibiscus, I put a wire in the clay and then I put a little ball of clay on the top of the wire. of sea grapes are this lovely wine red color so uh yeah i did that okay in this clip i am adding glue to the edges of um where the drawstring comes out because they were a little frayed in order to make this doll look a little bit more like my style when i draw i decided to add two little light brown shines to her eyes and then i did this behemoth of a task which was to arrange and glue all of the flowers to the crown. I used hot glue for this. I've decided having an embarrassing emo phase is part of Sally's backstory, so I painted her nails black, but you know, her fingernails are blue. It's just like her hidden true self. And with that, we're done.